Welcome to Diplomatic Channel. I am Amarachi Ubani. Ever since outbreak of the novel coronavirus started being reported outside of China, fears about the nature of the virus has been growing. So much so that the World Health Organization has raised coronavirus risk at very high global level. More than 50 countries of the world have reported confirmed cases of the virus, now known as COVID-19. By Thursday night, Nigeria became one of them. People are being told not to panic. The case in Nigeria is of a 44-year-old man who came in from Milan, Italy. Milan is a city in northern Italy, the capital of Lombardy, and the second most populated city in Italy after Rome. Lombardy is the region set to be worst affected by the coronavirus in Italy. Out of 400 reported cases in the country, the virus has killed 12, and there are fears the outbreak may tip the country into economic recession. Plus, authorities have shut schools, universities, museums, and theaters across north of Italy over fears of the virus spread. Now, bear in mind there are more than 80,000 confirmed cases of COVID-19 around the world alone. It is also claimed that the new coronavirus may have circulated in northern Italy for weeks before it was detected, and this seriously complicates efforts of, tack of tracking and controlling the rapid spread of the virus across Europe. The claim follows laboratory tests that isolated a strain of the virus from an Italian patient, which showed genetic difference compared with the original strain of isolated uh, cases in China and two Chinese tourists who became sick in Rome. Now there are three more suspected cases of coronavirus in three Chinese men in Plateau State here in Nigeria. So the Ministry of Health, the Lagos State Government and the Ubu State Government have set to work trying to contain a situation with a 44-year-old man, tracing those who may have come in contact with him. We have started working to identify all the contacts of the patient uh, since he entered Nigeria and even those who were with him on the aircraft. We have been in touch with the aircraft authority, the aircraft owners, to uh, find out who his seatmates were, were. Please be reminded that most people who become infected may experience only mild illness and recover easily. But you see, the case in Nigeria will be the first in sub-Saharan Africa and in West Africa. Remember, in our previous interview with Korea Ambassador Lushigwa Kinsoya, I did ask whether Africa should come together to tackle this global crisis instead of dealing with it. It deserves a global response because this is an epidemic uh, that is moving fast. And this comes, originates in a developed country with the wherewithal uh, to, to be able to contain it within their country, but you don't contain the movement of peoples. It's important that uh, EU should respond. There must be a continental response, just like we, we had in the case of Ebola, to contain the spread of this epidemic. This week, I have joining me the Director General of a West African Health Organization, Professor Stanley Okolo from Bobo Diolasso, Burkina Faso. Founded by the ECOWAS Protocol AP2787 of 9th July 1987, WAHO oversees 15 countries on West Africa to ensure coordination of regional interventions within the ECOWAS region. Professor Okolo, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you very much, Amarachi. Let's begin with what the West African Health Organization has been preparing uh, for a possible outbreak of coronavirus in West Africa. Our preparation for a possible outbreak um, of any epidemic is something that has been going on for several years now. We learned a lot from the Ebola epidemic, and what happened is that immediately soon after the, the Ebola epidemic, we started developing all the national public health institutions as the front line of preparedness for any epidemic. Now, one thing we have to be absolutely certain about is that although West Africa Health Organization, WAHO, is the body responsible for integration, for strengthening, for building networks, in any preparedness for an epidemic, the most important body is the national public health institution, which sometimes we call 
national coordinated institution. Mm -hmm. So in Nigeria, you are aware of the National Center for Disease Control, NCDC. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we have therefore done with all 15 countries is to ensure that the aspects of surveillance, preparedness, laboratory, personnel, and response are all integrated under one roof. So that you don't have laboratory on one side, you don't have uh, surveillance on the other side, and you have people who react on the other side. That is really what follows the International Disease Surveillance Regulation of WHO. So that's number one. Number two that we have done is to ensure that we build networks. Because before the coronavirus arrived, we were aware that we cannot develop the capacity for test and laboratory expertise in all countries. So what we did was, although all countries have laboratories, mm -hmm. we set up a platform of reference laboratories so that there is no specialization in terms of certain viruses. So the virus is one of the viruses that we call a hemorrhagic uh, in terms of uh, in terms of viruses that are upper, upper respiratory tract infection. And therefore, before this time, we had two laboratories, which was the one in Ghana, the Noguchi Laboratory, mm -hmm. and the one in Dakar, Pasteur Institute, that we are designated as specialist laboratories for these type of viruses. The first thing we've done in terms of preparation is that we have set up a rapid response team. And these are people who are epidemiologists that are trained. But at the same time, we bring them in from time to time to drills and simulation exercise to We can then deploy them acquire in other areas or hospitals. As you may remember, the virus hit mainly three countries, although Nigeria was mainly Guinea. Rapid response teams, you can deploy this area. So those are the three things that we have done. So I'm, I'm glad you did mention, you know, Ebola, because, um, uh, you know, during the time of the Ebola outbreak, there uh, were lots of references to other health organizations, WHO and the Nigeria Center for Disease Control, not much was heard about the West African Health Organization. Yes, you're right. Um, I um, would say probably that you may not have heard a lot about West African Health Organization in Nigeria because uh, it is important, first of all, remember West African Health Organization was involved in the Ebola effort, particularly in those three countries, Syria, Leone, Guinea, and Liberia. So that's number one. Number two, um, the West Africa Health Organization has always been involved, but part of the things that we have done recently is to strengthen the coordination, number one, to create a transparency within our relationship partners, number two and to ensure that there is collaboration across all organizations. Uh, could you confirm or debunk the claim that the coronavirus cannot survive in, uh, cannot thrive rather in this part of the world because of climate and because of our pigmentation? Well, as I, um, I said before when I was asked this question but I'm, uh, you know, with some other audience, the fact is there is no science to prove that. Therefore, we have to debunk that. The only thing we can say to people to remember is that viruses that cause upper respiratory tract infection or respiratory tract infection, just like this particular virus, they do have a seasonal variation. And that means that they tend to be commoner in the winter months than in the summer months. But that does not mean that there is any particular temperature at which they cannot. And part of the reason why they tend to spread more during the uh, uh, winter months is purely because they are spread by droplets. And therefore, that is part of the reason why I find that they tend to more than it's not the only reason. So, just to repeat, there is no evidence that 
coronavirus cannot survive all time. As you are aware, we have it in three countries in Africa, Egypt, Nigeria, Algeria. And these are one countries. Just a few days ago, you did say that ECOWAS agreed to come up with a regional cost plan, estimating that up to $50 million is required. How does ECOWAS expect to raise this, this fund, and where are we now with this plan? This plan is already um, finished. We are now validating it with, uh, uh, by sending it uh, to some of our, uh, to our country so that people will confirm. We receive member states' priorities. But even if, as I speak to you now, some of our partners are already stepping up to the plate and saying to us, we really want to help. And some of our partners, with whom we already have from ongoing programs, have tentatively agreed to shift some of the funds that we have for those programs towards preparedness for coronavirus because they understand the importance of that. However, the onus still remains on us in West Africa to remember that we have to support this program ourselves. So I'm appealing to the private sector, some of whom have made uh, positive noise, now step up to the plate and help us. We are contacting them. I'm also appealing to the countries and our, um, with the president before us, going to have some high level meetings uh, in order to ensure that we bring the, uh, to, 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 to everybody uh, a doorstep so that whoever can will immediately. Are you confident that Africa has what it takes? Africa, West Africa, Sub Saharan Africa, whatever part of Africa has what it takes to curb and cure? the coronavirus? I am much more confident now than we were during the Ebola time. But do please remember that I was not the DG of Wahoo at the Ebola time, so I'm only going by reports. I know that, for example, we now have a coordinating system across Africa. We have the Africa CDC, which uh, commenced in 2017. We also have the regional hub, and in ECOWAS in Waho, we have the ECOWAS RCDC, which is in Abuja. And this doubles as the regional hub for Africa CDC. We are now insisting on robust surveillance at all our borders. Of course, the maximum is airport, but we're also looking at seaports and land borders. That will require more thermal cameras, because these areas traditionally did not have thermal cameras. What would it mean, you know, if it is declared a pandemic? What, what would that mean? And then what would be the response to that on the part of the WHO and for the West Africa Health Organization? I think that is really the reason why I am making this plea that it is better that we are prepared for the worst at this point than to wait for it to become the worst. As you know, as you have noticed, the particular case, index case in Nigeria, did not come from China, it came from Italy. Now, that shows that the, in terms of high burden countries, it's increasing. Now, Italy and Iran are high burden countries. And that is one of the reasons, of course, why WHO keeps this on that review. And as of now, the threat is very high. It's no more just high. It is very high for our region. So that's number one. Number two, I think it's also to understand that what we have done in West Africa, which a lot of people have also done, is to ensure that we are as strong as the biggest country in our name. That's why we are constantly on our toes. We have twice weekly meetings. We look at which countries have certain challenges. We look at how to support them. We are in a slightly better position now. But in terms of the science and the research, a lot of it is going on in China. And WHO team China recently had their report, which showed that China is working a lot in terms of research. So the heads of government were right in the African Union to commend the efforts that China had done in order to stop this control and contain this effort. And the health ministers did the same when we met on the 14th of February, Bamako. 
Professor Stanley Okolo, it's been a pleasure speaking with you on the program. Thank you again. I appreciate your thoughts. I appreciate, you know, the information you're giving us right here on Diplomatic Channel. Thank you very much. And when we come back after the break, a failed deal between the European Union and Turkey may mean another round of migrant crisis for European countries. Stay with us.